Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss the concept of capital gain, capital loss, specifically the realized versus recognized. So gains and losses are covered eventually much, much in greater detail in property transactions. So if you're interested, go to my property transaction chapter. In this session, I want to differentiate between the concept of something realized versus recognized. What is a realized gain or realized loss versus a recognized gain or a recognized loss? So what is a realized gain? Well, a realized gain represents the real amount of gain. Now, what is a gain? Well, a gain is when you buy something and you sell it for more what you purchased for. Generally speaking, that's a gain. What is a loss? Generally speaking, you buy something and you sell it for less. This is what happened when we have a realize. It means it's either a gain or a loss resulting from the disposition or exchange property. It's computed by taking the difference between consideration received. Think of the consideration received here as cash. Now you could be receiving something other than cash. You could be receiving property. You could be receiving some other asset. The fair value of that asset will be considered consideration received, but usually between individuals, in most transaction, the common exchange is cash, but it doesn't have to be cash. But the formula is consideration received, or sometimes we call it amount realized, and the property adjusted basis. The property adjusted basis is usually the cost minus any depreciation, usually equal to the adjusted basis of the property. So what we do is we compare how much we received versus the adjusted basis of the property, assuming we took depreciation. If we did not take depreciation, the cost is usually the adjusted basis, unless we added more to that cost. In other words, our basis went up. So this is the formula to figure out whether we realized a gain or we recognized the gain. That's good. That's consider this as step one. Step two, we need to know what is recognized. If we, if we experienced a gain, is that gain taxable? Is that gain recognized? Recognized means taxable on the form, or is that loss recognized in terms of deductible? So we need to find out whether this gain is taxable or whether the loss is deductible. So recognized gain or loss is the amount that should be included in gross income or deducted from gross income. Because we're gonna learn later that some gains we might be able to defer, or who knows, it may not be taxable. Some losses we can deduct and others we cannot deduct. So that's why we need to know the realized amount. You don't know the recognized unless you know the realized. So the first thing is, do you know how to compute your realized? After you figure out the realized, what really happened, now tell me, is it taxable or is it deductible if it's a loss? Where do capital gains and capital losses generate from for, for individuals? They result from the sale of capital asset. What are capital asset? Well, specifically personal use asset. Personal use assets are asset that are used for personal purposes, like your chair, at the chair I'm sitting on, my desk. Actually, my desk is business because I'm using it for business. But think about the desk that you use, assuming you don't have a business. Your personal vehicle. Now, your personal vehicle could be used for business, but if you don't have a business, then it's a personal use asset. This is what we mean by personal use asset. Your furniture at the house, that's personal use asset. Your, your cell phone, personal use asset, assuming you're not using it for business. Or asset held for investment purposes. Here we're talking about stocks and bonds. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, farhatlectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's gonna help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. No obligation, no credit card required. From a form perspective, capital gains and capital losses are reported on Schedule 1 with additional income or loss for that matter. We're going to find out how do we treat gains and losses shortly. Notice here other gains and losses. And basically what we have to do is to prepare form called 4797. We don't cover this in here, but we'll cover it later on. Then if it's gain or loss, it gets netted. 
combine it all and it goes to your 1040 under other income with all the uh, combined with all the other income now what are the classification and tax rate that are subject to capital gains and losses so when dealing with personal use asset again personal use personal computer anything that's for personal use any gain to be recognized so if you sell a personal asset again you sell your refrigerator yeah, you're not gonna get a gain but let's assume you do experience a gain well if that gain is recognized or you sell your personal car you know for the past two three years used car went up in value so if you sold your car and you recognize you realize you, you realized a gain you would have to recognize the gain although it's a personal car however any loss is not deductible now think about it why think about all the assets that you buy for personal use Think about your refrigerator going back to this example well guess what if you use your refrigerator there is no way you're gonna sell it for 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 again therefore what what people would do if they can deduct their losses well they will buy something they will use it up then they sell it at a loss and get a tax deduction from the government the government says no losses are not deductible however gains because now you have the money you have the ability to pay you'll have to pay us so this is how it works now capital gains and capital losses fall into one of the following four categories and this is going to be discussed much 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 more in details later short-term capital gains short-term capital loss and short-term means 12 months or less long-term capital gains long-term capital loss obviously more than a year that's long-term long-term capital gain long-term capital loss for now it's important to note that short-term capital gain if you have any short-term capital gain it's treated as ordinary income so basically it's based on your individual tax rate whatever your tax rate is it's considered as it's taxed as wages which is the highest now on the other hand long term if it's a long term capital gain long term oops long term capital gain if you have a gain that's not short term that's long term well long term capital gain could be subject to 28 percent tax rate if it's considered collectible don't worry about this you will worry about that later could be sometime subject to 25 percent assuming it's a section 12 50 unrecaptured gain just accept this some sort of an unrecaptured gain go to my property transaction or it could be subject to 0, 15, or 20%. So notice for long-term capital gain, we have one, two, three, four, five different rates. Five different rates. Depending on the type of the asset, for example, collectible, or if it's Section 1250 and recaptured gains, or if it's a long-term capital gain, and that's it's subject to any of these 0, 15, and 20, depending on your tax filing status and your taxable income. And this will change from year to year again this topic is covered much more in depth in a different session so what happened to losses what happened if you have short-term capital loss or long-term capital loss well guess what the good news is individuals individuals are allowed to deduct up to three thousand of net capital losses from investment okay this is to arrive to your agi any excess losses again not from personal use asset from investment like stocks and bonds if you have more than three thousand it can be for carried forward indefinitely the good thing is this 3000 it, go, it goes against your ordinary income and if you cannot use it you just keep it and uh, excess capital losses may be carried forward while retaining their classification at either short term or long term let's take a look at a couple examples Ciela, an individual owns a fast food place in year two sold two vehicles the first one had been used for four years to deliver food to customers and was sold for two thousand so notice this is not a personal use this is a business use vehicle the second vehicle which has been used for two years for personal purpose was sold at a gain determine the capital gain or loss from the disposition well the delivery vehicle it's considered a business asset don't worry just for a business asset specifically it's section 1231 asset because it's held more than 12 months and used in a business this is the definition of a uh, 12 section 1231 asset therefore the loss of 2000 is section 1231 loss not a capital loss which is it's treated differently now the gain on the vehicle the gain on the vehicle you cannot net them you have to pay taxes on that depending how much taxes well it could be 0 15 and 20 because it's a long term over two years and depending on the individual taxable income let's look at example two george's had a short-term capital loss of 3250 a long-term capital loss of 2300 so 
short term capital loss and another long term capital loss of 2300 together that's 4500 and a short term capital gain plus 1500 again so we have losses of 45 gains of 1500 determine the amount of capital losses that george is allowed to deduct obviously overall if we net them out if you notice we have losses we have gains they could they would net out to actually this is 5500 not 4500 5500 of losses 1500 of gain we have a net loss of 4000 what can we do with that net capital loss well if it's a net if we have more than 4,000, we can deduct 4,000 this year, and we can carry the 1,000 forward indefinitely. So you just have to memorize this. After netting the gains and the losses, we have 4,000 in net losses. Why? Because we have 55 in losses overall, and a gain of 1,500, the net is 4,000. What can we do with this 4,000? 3,000 of it can be used against ordinary income, and the remaining 1,000 is carried forward indefinitely. Now, again, this topic is not, I did not cover this topic in depth because this just gave you a feeling of it, what needs to be done. But it's an important topic that's covered much, much more in, in property transaction. What should you do now? Go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional MCQs, true, false, additional options, choices that's going to help you do better whether you are a cpa candidate studying for the cpa exam or an enrolled agent candidate or an accounting student good luck study hard and of course stay safe